Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton, with Comptroller Susana Mendoza, Revenue Director David Harris, and leaders in the legislature, Representatives Harris, Hernandez, Davis, Zaleski, Gable, and Senator Sims. And we have an exciting announcement for Illinois families. Everyone knows inflation is a global problem with local consequences. Prices at the pump and at the supermarket have taken Illinois families on a roller coaster ride over the past months. It's exactly the kind of thing that responsible government should help our residents with, and we have. Starting today, six million Illinois taxpayers and their families will begin receiving income and property tax rebates either in the mail or directly in their bank accounts. An average family will receive hundreds of dollars in tax relief. You'll receive $100 for each dependent, up to three dependents, plus $50 per adult. And if you qualify as a homeowner and property taxpayer, and the vast majority of Illinois homeowners do, and if you claimed a property tax credit in 2021, you're set to receive both payments. There's nothing more you need to do. And even if you didn't claim that property tax credit last year, but qualify, you can still receive your rebate with an additional filing. Those funds will appear in the next few days and will roll out over the next six weeks. This initiative was shaped through the work between leaders in the General Assembly and me. And Comptroller Mendoza's team has done an excellent job implementing the initiative. In a few moments, she'll offer some more details on the direct relief to working and middle-class families. These rebate payments are just one in a series of actions that we're taking to provide some financial cushion in these times. Last month, we scrapped the sales tax on school supplies for families returning to the classroom. You won't pay a dime in state sales tax for groceries until next summer. We're making incredible progress on rebuilding our roads without increasing the costs at the pump that make the construction possible. And I want to be clear, the relief isn't going away. Next year, we're increasing and expanding the earned income tax credit, putting another $100 million back into the pockets of hardworking residents and doing it again every year hereafter. That's a permanent change, relief you can count on. And let's be clear, our overall $1.8 billion relief program is possible because Democrats balanced the budget, eliminated the bill backlog, funded schools, and fixed the roads. And through responsible financial decision-making, still found ourselves with a one-time surplus. There are those who might have sent those funds straight back into the pockets of the 1% or big corporations, but you won't find any of them standing here today. Working families deserve better. So I want to thank you all, and with that, I'm proud to introduce my partner, one of the strongest advocates for working families and the best lieutenant governor in the nation, Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton, and I use she, her pronouns. Thank you so much, Governor, for that warm introduction and for always leading our state with the well-being of Illinois families as the top priority. I also want to acknowledge everyone joining us for this announcement who are committed to providing Illinoisans the support they need. In the interest of time, I'll just say thank you to the elected officials and leaders present for your hard work and dedication to the communities you serve. You know, good government is about being there for the people we serve and showing them that we are and will continue to be there for them. With the issuing of these tax rebates, let me paint a picture of how we are showing the people of Illinois that we see them and we are listening to them. Starting now and in the coming weeks, a person in Illinois can walk up to their mailbox thinking, I'm just going to find another bill that needs to be paid. But instead, they find a postcard sent from the state of Illinois telling them that they have money on the way. Imagine in the face of inflation and unprecedented challenges put on the families of our state, 
what that message could mean to so many. Not another bill or marked up price tag, but a message that says this money is for you because we know how hard you work. For working families with children, that money could put more food on the table. It could relieve the stress of trying to make ends meet or having to take an extra shift to make sure the rent or mortgage is paid on time. It could mean finally having a little extra money to pay for, to save for the future after being stretched too thin to focus on anything but making it day to day. Because this is about relief, and that's why our state leaders work to provide $1.8 billion in direct tax relief and will continue efforts to put money's back, money back in the pockets of Illinois families. We know there's more work to do, and we are far from done, but we are in this together as one Illinois and will rise up as one. Thank you, and now I'll pass it over to Controller Susana Mendoza. Controller. Well, thank you, Governor Pritzker and Lieutenant Governor Stratton and uh, Director Harris and all of our other dignified leaders here. I, I will say that we're missing two really important people, uh, but I want to make sure that they're uh, appreciated as well, and that is Speaker Welch and Senate President Harmon, um, who were integral in all of this happening as well. But it's wonderful to be here with all of you today. As controller, I'm very pleased to announce that we remain on schedule and the first wave of tax rebate checks will be going out from my office to taxpayers beginning today, September 12th. A total of $1.2 billion will be released over the next six to eight weeks to nearly six million taxpayers. This volume nearly doubles what my office sends out in a single year. And getting it all completed as soon as possible is my primary goal. My office will be working diligently to get these rebates into the hands of taxpayers. After all, it's your money. We have worked with the Department of Revenue to combine both the income tax rebate and the property tax rebate together. This will save money on both paper and postage. And as you all know, I love to save money. This is what happens when you have legislators, the governor, and state officials working together crafting responsible budgets year after year, paying off our debts, eliminating the bill backlog, and earning six credit upgrades in less than a year. Instead of spending whatever comes in, we are returning money to taxpayers and are doing the responsible fiscal action of saving for a rainy day with over a billion dollars now in savings versus less than $60,000 during the budget impasse, and putting 500 million additional dollars and extra funds towards our pensions so that we can save taxpayers money in the long run. I'm proud of the work we've done, and I look forward to continuing working with Governor Pritzker and the legislative leaders with Director Harris and this incredible team on further strengthening Illinois' financial footing. Thank you all for being here today, and I now have the distinct pleasure of introducing a partner, a great one, Director David Harris. Thank you, Madam Comptroller. Um, it is an exciting privilege for me to stand here with Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, the Comptroller Mendoza and these distinguished legislators to talk about genuine tax relief for the people of the state of Illinois. Uh, the department was instrumental in helping to make all of this happen, uh, and uh, I think we've got an absolutely great program out there for, the, for our taxpayers. You've heard the highlights, but let me give you just a brief uh, description of some of the specifics on the background. Roughly 6 million taxpayers will get uh, uh, tax rebates. That's divided about 3 million will get direct deposits and about 3 million will get paper checks, depending on the method of refund or how they filed their returns. There's still about 200,000 returns uh, to be expected before October the 17th, which is the last filing date for uh, last year's return. Uh, as you know, $50 per individual uh, for individual uh, taxpayers who file an individual return and have uh, an AGI, an adjusted gross income, of less than 200000 If you file the joint return, you get $100 uh, in a rebate. 
That's on the income tax side, on the property tax side, up to $300 for a, a property tax rebate for those that filed uh, or claimed a credit on their, uh, on their uh, return. The income tax and the property tax rebates will be combined into a single payment. Uh, the coordination between the Department of Revenue and the Comptroller's Office is routine. We do this with uh, tax refunds, so there was no hurdle to get over to do that for uh, property tax uh, uh, rebates. The rebates will be issued on what's known as a first-in, first-out basis so that the taxpayers that filed soon after tax filing season opened on January the 24th will be the first ones to get uh, their rebates. The three million individuals that filed uh, or that uh, will receive a direct deposit are also going to get, as was referred to, a postcard alerting them to the fact that the rebates are in process. And the reason that was done is Think about if you received money all of a sudden in your account that you didn't know was coming. You'd say, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. So we wanted to alert taxpayers that are getting a direct deposit that, uh, what, that, uh, what that money is for. As for the paper checks, there is a, a notification on the paper check that, uh, that it is due to the rebates. Again, the rebates are issued automatically based on your uh, tax returns, so taxpayers don't have to do anything. That money is going to come to them directly. There will be taxpayers who may not have a tax liability uh, and may not then uh, automatically be, uh, be eligible or may not automatically get a property tax return even though they have uh, filed or paid property taxes. There is a s very simple form on the uh, website of the Department of Revenue, which is tax dot Illinois dot gov that those uh, taxpayers can fill out and send in either on paper or they can do it uh, electronically. All questions related to the tax uh, rebates are uh, available or questions are uh, answers are available on that uh, that website tax dot Illinois Illinois spelled out dot gov g o v tax dot Illinois dot gov. Thank you very much and I will be followed by my former colleague and, uh, and a great legislator, the Leader Harris from the House. Uh, thanks, David. Uh, my name is Greg Harris. I use he, his pronouns. And, you know, it's really nice to be able to stand here today with, you know, good news for Illinois on the financial front. You know, we've worked really hard with the governor, with the comptroller, Senator Sims, and the Senate, you know, all of my House colleagues to balance our budget, to pay down the $17 billion in debts of the Rahner area, and to close the structural deficit in our state budget. But we kept in mind that in addition to being financially responsible, the budgets that we put forth are also moral documents. And the budgets that we propose are not only financially responsible, but they're morally responsible. Families and workers and health care institutions and child care providers and disability providers, you know, all got tremendously stretched during the, the COVID pandemic. And this budget helps where we can. In addition to the $1.8 billion that will be returned to Illinois taxpayers, we're putting aside money, as the comptroller said, you know, $1 billion for a rainy day fund. But we did more. We also added $350 million to the state funding formula to go directly to local school districts and help bring down the pressure on local school districts so they don't have to raise property taxes. We increased by 25% the MAP grants that go out to allow Illinois students to get a college education. And this year, because of the action that we took with Governor Pritzker and the Senate, 24,000 more Illinois students will be able to go to college. We funded senior programs that will allow 2,500 additional senior citizens to get services to stay in their homes uh, instead of going into nursing homes. And the 12 million home-delivered meals and through Meals on Wheels programs will go out to our seniors. We put $410 million into child care, 
to preserve and expand the availability of child care so that as parents are trying to figure out how to get back to work and juggle their work and their school and their families at home, you know, there's going to be re resources out there to serve them. And certainly the largest increase in Illinois history in funding for mental health and substance abuse because we know in going through COVID that so many people are struggling right now and every person despite you know what community you live in what corner of the state deserves access to community-based and you know culturally appropriate uh, mental health and substance abuse services and you know I, I just want to point out too that you know we did this very conservatively relying on the projections of tax revenues from a growing Illinois economy. You know, since Governor Pritzker has taken over office, we've seen our economy stabilize and grow. We've seen things returning after COVID. So, you know, there are those out there who say, oh, you're just using ARPA money, et cetera, et cetera. No, that's not the case. You know, we are prudently looking at the way our economy is growing. Businesses are coming to Illinois. Families are returning to work. And we're proud that, you know, right now, six million Illinois households are going to get tax refunds and uh, rebates from the state of Illinois this year. And key to putting this together, you know, one of the top advisors in the Illinois House of Representatives on crafting our budget is uh, Assistant Majority Leader Lisa Hernandez. Thank you, Greg, for that introduction. Good afternoon. I am uh, pleased to be here to help announce the rollout of the tax rebates included in the FY23 uh, budget. Due to the current inflation and the lingering effort, uh, effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, we know Illinoisans are struggling. This year has not been easy for individuals and families alike, yet we are inspired by the grit and determination you all have shown as you continue to overcome the challenges. Uh, as your elected leaders, it is our duty to provide financial relief to the people and families that need it the most. My colleagues in the General Assembly and I have worked hard to collaborate with the governor's office to do, do just that. The property and income tax rebates we are announcing today are putting money back into the pockets of Illinois taxpayers as they work hard to make ends meet for themselves and their families. These rebates will help the everyday Illinois put food on the uh, dinner table, gas in the car, or simply help them to get through this time a little easier. In all, these tax rebates demonstrate our ongoing commitment to supporting working class people and families in Illinois. You are the lifeblood of our state, and we will continue to show up and stand up for you. I am grateful for my colleagues, Governor Pritzer and his administration for their cooperation and collaboration in providing Illinois families with this tax relief. Together, we sought to provide financial support to the people of Illinois during these turbulent times. And only together were we, uh, we are able to make this possible. Let's continue to build a stronger Illinois for all. And I'll say this in Spanish as well. Me da gusto estar con ustedes para anunciarles que esta semana comenzarán a salir los reembolsos a los impuestos que incluimos en el presupuesto de año fiscal 2023. Debido a la inflación económica y los efectos continuos de la crisis de COVID-19, sabemos que nuestra comunidad necesita una mano. Como líderes electos, es nuestro deber dar apoyo económico a las familias que más lo necesitan. Juntos a mis colegas, colaboraré con el gobernador Pritzker para lograr justamente eso. Los reembolsos que hoy anunciamos demuestran nuestro compromiso con ustedes, nuestra comuni comunidad, la fuerza de nuestro estado. Agradezco al gobernador Pritzker y su gobierno Por, por unirse a nuestro esfuerzo y lograr este reembolso. Juntos buscamos conseguir este apoyo económico y juntos seguiremos trabajando para crear un estado fuerte y próspero para todos. Gracias. And now uh, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce letter, uh, Leader Will Davis, who's one of the um, uh, budget negotiators. Uh, Leader?
Thank you very much, Leader Hernandez, for that kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Will Davis. I'm state representative of the 30th district, which comprises several communities in the south suburbs of Chicago. I can't tell you how pleased and honored I am to be here with these individuals sitting seated behind me. Uh, the opportunity to work to try to benefit not only my constituents, but individuals throughout the entire state of Illinois is something that I truly enjoy and look forward to uh, every year. We've done something very historic. I don't believe in my tenure as a legislator that I've ever seen this type of tax relief package uh, that is benefiting Illinois residents. Um, you've heard from previous speakers about all the great things that are being done to try to impact uh, individuals uh, here in Illinois. And if I had to, in this case, sum it up into kind of two words, I would probably say cha-ching. <laughs> and we know it's not a lot, but every little bit helps. When you think about not only being able to put food on the table, uh, uh, gas in the car, but if you are a, a family or an individual that has young children, you're also thinking about the ability to pay for after-school programming. Um, if you're working hard, you want your young people to have a safe place to be uh, at the end of the school day and not just being a latchkey child. So you're thinking about what it is and the impact for young people as well. Um, part of our tax relief package um, was a sales tax holiday for school supplies as our young people are just getting back into the swing of things with school. But we know school supplies are expensive. I think that T183 calculator that is required for high school students, that in and of itself costs over $100. So here's an opportunity to either put some money back into their pockets that maybe they've spent already, or an opportunity to get something that they couldn't necessarily afford to begin with. So this is great to be able to be a part of this and the impact that it's going to have on residents. The governor talked a little earlier about infrastructure. Um, he was just in Harvey, Illinois, just at the end of last week to talk about an infrastructure project that's moving forward after about 12 years of being delayed. That project is going to benefit the city of Harvey, the village of Riverdale, the village of Dixmoor, and the city of Blue Island. So in addition to trying to put these resources back into the pockets of individuals, the governor's doing tremendous things throughout the entire state of Illinois. He's taking a multifaceted approach. He's not just doing one thing and then going back to the drawing board to try to figure something else out. He's working with the General Assembly. He's working with Democrats to try to put together packages that are going to benefit the entire state of Illinois as well as our districts as well. And I'm very proud to stand here with him and to correct, congratulate him as well as members of the General Assembly who are working to try to make sure that we are doing everything possible to benefit residents here in the state of Illinois. And again, as you think about the individuals seated behind me, it's not only just the work of the General Assembly and the Governor's Office, and then you've got the implementation aspect of it from Director Harris, Department of Revenue, as well as Comptroller Mendoza. So this is a great dream team that we have sitting behind us, working very hard, and we'll continue to work hard on behalf of residents in the state of Illinois. So I'm pleased and honored to be here with you today. And next, I'd like to bring to the microphone another leader in the Illinois House, Leader Robin Gate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Leader Davis. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. Uh, my name is Robin Gable, State Representative, the 18th District. I represent much of the North Shore of Chicago. <clears throat> So I am very pleased to be here today to really roll out the rebate that will be available for over six million families in Illinois. Uh, you know, representing one of the wealthiest communities in, in Illinois, uh, even, even representing the wealthiest communities in Illinois, my uh, constituents will be thrilled to receive these rebates. Uh, the district is diverse and this rebate will really help many of the working families uh, in, the, in the district and throughout the state. As, as you've heard, the details of the program, um, it will really help families who, you know, sometimes live paycheck to paycheck. This will be some additional cash that they can use for either food on the table or um, possibly saving these dollars. So I really thank the governor, I thank all my colleagues, uh, and I really want to thank uh, <coughs> uh, Director uh, Harris, um, these, this was a great idea. I, uh, uh, along with uh, Leader Davis, I have never seen anything like this before in the state, and I'm really proud to be part of the process. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce Senator L.G. Sims, a good friend and one of the key budgeteers who put this plan together.
Thank you, Leader Gable. Uh, Governor Pritzker, Governor, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, Director Harris, Controller Mendoza, thank you all for your fortitude and your desire to push forward for the people of the state of Illinois. As we crafted this year's budget, we knew we were, we were being what all of us were hoping for was focused. We were being focused on the future, focused on providing for those individuals who could not provide for themselves, making sure that we are paying off our bills. And once we start to look at and we were able to pay our bills, we knew we, want, we had to give back and help Illinoisans pay theirs. That's why that $1.8 billion in tax relief is so critical. It allows families to put money back into their pockets, allows them to address the concerns and the needs that they have, the challenges that they face each and every day. Consistency is a great thing. It requires and allows us to make sure that we are making decisions on an ongoing basis for the future of this great state. More than 13 million people in the state of Illinois require, and they, they demand, that we do things on their, in their best interest. And that's what we're working towards, we're working towards a budget that fu fully funds our pension system, that fully funds education, that it, it pays our old bills. We want to make sure that, we, that our, our families have the best and brightest future. And that's what this budget was all about, and that's what this family release, relief plan does. It allows for us to provide for the families who are, who are struggling in these very difficult times. So I'm just so proud to be able to stand here with, these, with the leaders of the General Assembly, but also with the governor, who has been a steadfast, a commit, a steadfast in his commitment to moving our state forward. His, his, his commitment to the people of the state of Illinois is unchallenged, and I'm so proud of the work that he has done and to be his partner. Partnerships are about making sure we are moving forward together, and that's what we've been able to do. So I'm so proud to be able to do, stand here with all of our leaders uh, in announcing this tax plan and tax relief plan for, our, for the people of the state of Illinois. And with that, I'd like to bring to the podium Representative Michael Zalewski. Uh, thank you, Senator. Thank you to the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Controller, and my colleagues. Uh, when you go last, you get to cover anything anyone else hasn't covered. Um, this was, as Revenue Chairperson, um, it's been five years of telling everybody no. This was the year, finally, we got to tell, tell Illinoisans yes, and it's a very exciting document. Greg mentioned um, budgets are moral documents. Um, I would say our tax code is a moral document, too, and it's becoming fairer. Um, Illinoisans are deriving a benefit from a tax code for the first time in a long time. Uh, the governor touched on it, um, and it's an understated thing, but the expansion of the earned income tax credit is, is a huge deal for Illinoisans um, who are emerging in this state and trying to make their way. And we expanded it uh, this year, and we are on our way to a fairer tax code uh, through existing um, law, which is incredibly exciting for the state of Illinois, incredibly exciting for me as, as chairperson of the Revenue Committee. So I'd like to thank the governor for his hard work, the uh, uh, lieutenant governor, the controller, my colleagues. It's truly an exciting year to be able to deliver tax relief to Illinois. Um, and with that, I'm going to give it back to the governor for questions and run away as fast as I can. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Um, happy to take questions from members of the media. Governor, on the property tax rebate, Republicans yes. say the rebates are fine, but you're not taking into account that the average homeowner <coughs> had an added property tax bill of about $2,000 since you took office. Why not push for a property tax freeze? or restructuring how local governments collect property? There absolutely is more that we ought to do on property taxes. And let me be clear, property taxes are the purview and under the control of local governments. That is not a state government function. Uh, what we're trying to do is alleviate some of the burden that people are suffering at the local level from local property tax levies. Uh, there were a number of bills that uh, I know Representative Zaleski and his committee considered uh, that I think are worthy of us pursuing uh, going forward to make sure that we're lowering property tax across the state. You know that one of the uh, major programs that I put through was reform of police and fire pensions so that we would lower the burden on local property taxes across the state. We accomplished that. 75 years of governors and legislatures trying to do something about that, we got it done. So no doubt about it, more needs to be done on property taxes. We're giving that the average uh, property tax owner in Illinois is paying more than $2,000 since you took office. Why not push for a property tax freeze, given we've had all this federal money coming in 
to the state. There are other opportunities to fund schools and things that local property taxes pay for. Well, you say federal money is coming into the state. Absolutely, but that's one-time money. Um, so be clear, we use that for one-time purposes. Um, what we need is comprehensive property tax reform so that we can bring, back to bring down property taxes uh, going forward. That th this should not be uh, a, a problem every single year for property taxpayers. Uh, the fact that property taxes are going up, it's, it's a huge challenge for the state of Illinois. But this year, because we had a surplus, and because it's a one-time surplus, we're providing uh, a one-time property tax uh, relief measure that puts hundreds of dollars back in people's pockets. But no doubt, more we can, work needs to be done. Inflation, yeah. With inflation and gas prices. So the one point two billion released over the next six to eight weeks, some might think that you're trying to buy votes. Well, we passed it back in the spring. That's when you pass a budget. Um, and uh, it went into effect at the beginning of the uh, fiscal year. That's July first. Uh, it takes some time. The controller only just got enough paper. Think about the supply chain issues uh, in order to be able to issue the checks. And then, of course, you've got to make sure you've got the reserves of $1.2 billion to send out to people when you're sending the checks out. So uh, that's why it takes a little time. But it, as fast as possible, this is just about two months uh, after it became effective. So as fast as we could, the, the checks are going out. have not heard from the governor of Arizona or any effort in that regard. Um, we have reached out, our department heads, uh, people within the departments have reached out to the state of Texas, to their departments, their counterparts, to get information. We don't get information from the state of Texas. Think about this. They're sending people on buses without telling us when they're coming. They sometimes arrive with three to perhaps 24 hours notice. Uh, and that means that we've got to find shelter for them. This is potentially hundreds of people at a time. Uh, we've got to find shelter for them, make sure they're providing the right kind of medical care. Some people arrive with particular medical problems. Some are, are just uh, healthy and, and need to get a checkup. Uh, but a, an awful lot of it has to be done upon their arrival. Um, we're a state that, that cares for people who need that care. We're a welcoming state. We have welcoming centers. Oh, by the way, reception centers that we put together are there to receive those buses. The governor of Texas is sending those buses to Union Station instead of just driving them right to where people can get the care that they need and we can begin to provide the uh, shelter and the food that they need. So, um, look, we're, we're managing as best we can, but the governor of Texas is sowing chaos around the nation uh, doing this. We aren't the only state that's received uh, asylum seekers uh, from Texas. And again, he's doing this to everybody, uh, or at least to several states now. And you know, we're, we're not unique among those states. Uh, but we certainly have reached out. And it is very important, and I'll be clear right here, the governor of Texas needs to stop sowing chaos and needs to actually work with states if he's going to you know, send people. And let's make sure these people actually wanted to go to the states that they're being sent to, because otherwise it's kidnapping. Governor, can I follow up with that? Because sure. The Elko Village Mayor said uh, that you know, you're complaining about being blindsided by the governor of Texas, but this town got blindsided. He said, two wrongs don't make a right. Why no. is your administration not communicating to the suburban mayors the same thing that you're we are, but let, let me just let me just bet. Well, uh, let me explain. When we get three hours notice, or six hours notice, or twelve hours notice, that there are people coming, we literally are then looking for places that we, we don't know how many are coming. Uh, we get a rough estimate, but don't know exactly how many are coming, and we need to find them shelter nearly immediately. And uh, the shelters in the city of Chicago sometimes get filled. Uh, and the result is that there need to be shelters found in other places. Look, the city of Chicago is doing the best that they can. We're providing uh, resources for the city of Chicago and for these refugees and asylum seekers. Uh, and we give notice as fast as we can. 
hundred percent that you know there are calls that have to be made and notifications that need to be made but with hours notice there's an awful lot that needs to get done and this has to do uh, not with we're picking some suburb but rather this there happens to be a hotel that's available that has the right number of rooms for us to uh, uh, send asylum seekers to and then we we notify them by the way sure Because sometimes the migrants are calling people that they know. They have sponsors, friends, relatives in states surrounding Illinois. Uh, How and do they know they're going to Elk Grove Village before you even leave? No, they're getting a call because sometimes they're getting a call along the way. The people who are on the bus aren't calling the state of Illinois. We ought to be getting a call from the state of Texas. That's just the way it ought to work. We work together, governors and legislatures across the country, talk to one another about managing through challenges that we have between states, uh, but not apparently the state of Texas. This is all a political game for Governor Abbott, and frankly, it's cruel. Well, you know that we're investing uh, heavily in infrastructure, and particularly with uh, resiliency uh, and climate change uh, as a focus. So, um, though that's something we're doing across the state, Chicago is not unique in having experienced that. In fact, there are many places across the state that are getting, you know, 100 year floods literally every year or two. And so, we've got to continue to rebuild our infrastructure and make sure that we're providing the you know, the drainage, the flood control, et cetera, that's necessary. I want to make sure you get Craig. Um, I was going to follow up one more on, yes. the, uh, on the mayor. Given all the mobilization that was done during COVID, is there not some mechanism for doing kind of a conference call among suburban mayors to say, let's brainstorm who can take people where ahead of time? It's, it's, my, it's my understanding. Remember, these folks are coming to the city of Chicago. So it's my understanding that the mayor of the city of Chicago actually has had a conference call with mayors. It's Remember, these folks are – it's not like there's going to be a mass effort to send people to suburban locations. It's just that when there isn't enough room at hotels in the city of Chicago and people are arriving – uh, with a few hours' notice, uh, that they, you know, we end up having to send them where it is possible for us to provide immediate shelter. And be clear, this is a few weeks, perhaps as much as 30 days, uh, in which we're providing that shelter, and those folks are getting picked up, as you somebody pointed out, uh, by relatives. They 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 have friends. They have sponsors. Uh, there are an awful lot of people who are just, they're moving on once they come to Chicago, but they need to, uh, they're coming here having been screened by uh, Customs and Border Patrol. Um, they receive, you know, facial scans and, and uh, fingerprints and uh, medical screens before they even come here. And then we uh, receive them and provide medical care if, they're, if it's necessary, have them checked. Uh, and make sure that they have what they need uh, so that we can care for them. This is a humanitarian effort on the part of the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois, and it's a temporary one. So, go Governor, there's a hard-hitting political commercial. It aired during the Bears game yesterday. It's by a super Go factor. Bears, 1910, go Bears. <laughs> Let's just say that before you get to your no, question. You yeah. That. yeah. Uh, well, now we got a Packers fan. Oh, a Packers. <laughs> I'm sorry, the door is that way. <laughs> anyway, so it, it shows the, the Lakeview mugging of a woman. All we hear in the commercial is her screams. It ends with a picture yeah. of you and Lori Lightfoot uh, on the screen. Did you see that commercial? Do you have any reaction? Look, it's terrible. It's a terrible commercial. Uh, they've chosen uh, a particular crime in which there was a white woman who is the victim and apparently black perpetrators. Uh, that's the ad they want people to see, particularly in the suburbs. That's part of the entire racial tinge of everything that's being put out by that pack. 
Uh, and let's also take note, at least this morning, I think I read that uh, the victim uh, may not have approved of any of this and, and probably should have been consulted about her crime being put all over television, the crime that, that uh, was perpetrated against her. Uh, I, I think it's disgusting, and I've said that before. I think, you know, we, we ought to be running this on the, you want to talk about crime? Let's talk about crime. Darren Bailey uh, sanctions these kinds of uh, ads, uh, thinks they're okay, has accepted the support of that PAC, uh, and Darren Bailey is the one who voted to defund police, literally voted against budgets that would fund state police for Illinois, the increase in state police that we need. Uh, voted against providing new crime labs so we can solve crimes faster. Uh, those crime labs are the ones that have eliminated the rape kit backlog in our state. The, Darren Bailey voted against all of the things that would reduce crime, you know, preventing violent crime. Uh, so, you know, it's, he talks out of one side of his mouth and then he's okay accepting support from people who are putting forward, you know, racially charged, um, you know, ads that are attacks about crime that, frankly, he's responsible uh, more than any, uh, more than many others for. Are, are you saying, are you saying the commercial is racist? I'm saying that the intent of the people who put it out, look at all the things that they're involved in, clearly has a racial tinge to it.